Bobby Sessions, young legend from Dallas, Texas, and I manifest things for a living. So what inspired you to sample N.E.R.D.? Well, the Sooner or Later song from N.E.R.D. is my favorite song ever. It just always resonated with me, especially the Chad Hugo guitar solo at the end. And I think for a debut album, is it would be great to rap over something that already speaks to my soul already. Can you talk about the creative process sort of behind this song? Yeah, so I tried to sample this song almost a decade ago now. I was early in my career as an artist and I wasn't developed enough to tackle that kind of production, nor was I ready enough to uh, explain the vision of what I wanted at that time either. And I think the older one was called Soul Searching. With this one, Cognitive Machine, I've had a number of different experiences since then, and I've developed and matured a, a lot as an artist. So it, it came together a lot differently. This song was made a few months ago. Wow, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. So you've been making music for like a really long time. I've been doing music a, a long time, for sure. Wow. How did you get started? I had been like freestyling and things of that nature all throughout school. And by the time I got to college, I was doing poetry and things of that nature, but I still wasn't rapping for real. And they had a um, something called Poetic Justice, which was... It's like a student-led organization thing. They would have events every Tuesday night in front of the student union where poets, singers, rappers, instrumentalists would stand in like the circle and showcase their talents. And I went and did some poetry and then got a great reaction. And they had a freestyle cipher at the end where people stood in a circle and was rapping, coming up with lyrics off the top of the head. And I felt I was better than the people there. So I went back to my dorm room and really wrote my first rap. I came back the next Tuesday, recited it, and people went crazy. And then I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. Oh, my God. Where did you go to school? UNT, University of North Texas. Did you study music? I didn't. By the time I left school, my major was in sociology and my minor was in philosophy. Sociology. I almost majored in that at school, but then I chose film. So... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What I love too about how you sampled it is that it's almost like you're interacting with the sample. Like it's like you're having a conversation with Pharrell. I thought yeah. that was such a cool technique and that's like unique because yeah call and response is like used in music a lot but you took a song that that wasn't originally how it was made and then you just like were talking to him right yeah it's a cool moment it's uh me and pharrell going back and forth on the hook i think a word you used was pretty good it's very interactive it's like a conversation between me and him a lot of people when they sample they're taking you know maybe a phrase that they use during a hook or they're sampling just the music this one is like I'm really rapping, like in the verses, for example, I'm rapping over his vocals. So, yes, it's definitely an interesting flip. And I think when anytime someone samples, it should just be different. You don't want to just take what they did and put drums on it and be like, hey, this is a new thing. Like they should be impressed by the time they hear it. And it's very hard to clear an NERD sample. We're talking for real Williams, Chad Hugo with the Neptunes, not easy things to clear. So we wanted to make sure the song was of a certain quality or it was undeniable by the time it got on their desk. Yeah, it definitely is. It's so dope. I haven't really sampled anything in my own music before, but I've looked into how to clear samples in case I wanted to. And I was just like, oh my God, I think yeah. I'll just not do that. So <laughs> I can't imagine, especially because Frel yeah. is so huge. Yeah, it's a wild thing. I mean, you know, it speaks to that power of manifestation and, and the elements on the album. We, it already starts off with manifesting, rapping on, over my favorite song, and we continue those manifestations throughout the project. Hell yeah. Another thing I really loved about this song is your vocal delivery is so different. Like you do so many different styles. So I was wondering like what other musical inspirations are you taking from in your delivery? It's a great question. I would say my biggest influences musically is Jay-Z, Pharrell, Kanye, 
Kendrick and Tupac. Those are the, the artists that's had the biggest influence on how I hear music. The passion of Tupac, the lyrical integrity of Jay-Z, the out-of-the-box nature of Pharrell, the commitment to greatness of Kanye. The way they hear music is definitely shaped and molded the way I hear things and want to express things. Everybody has a certain commitment to making the best art possible. With that comes a lot of experimentation. What is the best version of Bobby Sessions? What does that sound like? In order for me to arrive at that, which I'm still on that journey, I have to try different things with my tone of voice. I have to make sure that when I'm projecting my voice that it cuts through this beautiful music so it's not my vocal isn't drowned out by the time you hear it. Yeah, I think just a lot of experimentation and taking creative risk and not being afraid to fail. I think it's, it's the best way to approach music and also the best way to live your life as well. Hell yeah. I mean, that's so interesting that you mentioned Kendrick too, because I was listening to your older stuff, your Revolution albums, and I was like, oh, wow, this does remind me of Kendrick when I was listening to those. Yeah, I, I would say where Kendrick has influenced me is more along the lines of, you can tell when you listen to any body of work of his that he was trying to make the best thing possible. And that's the biggest influence he's had on me more than a, like a style thing. It's more just a commitment to excellence. So when I go into making music I want to take that same intention of being committed to excellence making the best conceptual body of work possible for sure awesome what are you coming out with next like is this single leading up to like another album or yeah so cognitive machine is the lead single off of my debut album called manifest everything that came out before the revolution trilogy for example you know that plays like a, a netflix series almost where you walk into the space being comfortable having uncomfortable conversations about what's going on manifest is people realizing that they're their own light at the end of the tunnel people manifesting the dreams law of attraction and taking ideas in their mind and holding them in their hand. I would describe it as like what The Chronic was by Dr. Dre. It's the chronic of self-help. Uh, Cognitive Machine is an appetizer for a great album that people will be hearing in a couple months. All right. That's awesome. Do you have like Thank a you. release date picked yet or is that? Uh, it'll be released in May. All right. Nice. Yeah, nice. Last thing, how you mentioned the light at the end of the tunnel it made me think of your song Lights. Mm. I just want to say that was so dope. Like these albums honestly like made me emotional. I thought like the sort of double meaning between like, you know, like the light at the end of the tunnel and like the tail light being out, like mm -hmm. lights on a car. I thought that was like so clever. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm excited to keep up with your stuff, man. Like you're so talented. I appreciate and, that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's funny. Lice is actually probably um, my top two to three favorite songs from the Revolution trilogy. But yeah, I think Manifest will be, I, I like to think of it as like a reinvention. I don't ever want you to feel like you know what you're about to listen to. I want it to always be a, a unexpected sonic journey whenever someone hears something. And, and Manifest is definitely it doesn't play like Revolution plays, which is great. They have different sonic identities. I would say. Oh, really? Yeah, for sure. Do you for borrow sure. from like different genres or like? I would say so. I, I think even Cognitive Machine is an example of it. It's rap. It's kind of rock music a bit in the hook. It, it has a bunch of different genres that are blended together. And that occurs in other moments in the, the Manifest album as well. That's awesome. I'm so excited. It's gonna oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a great time. It's going to lead to a great manifesting summer for sure. Oh, and yeah. beyond summertime yeah. release baby let's go for sure that's awesome well thank you so much this was awesome do you want to plug anything else yeah remember manifest is coming in may the debut album make sure you get issue 24 of uh the black panther comic that's in stores now or you can get them uh at marvel.com and also continue to stream Coming to America on Amazon Prime and stream I'm a King with myself and Megan Thee Stallion. Yes. That is another thing I wanted to mention. Your song with Megan Thee Stallion is so good. I That's appreciate cool. it. Thank you. I've been seeing all the, the Zamunda challenges on TikTok. Um, they're pretty cool. So I hope people continue to do them. Hell yeah. I thought it was so clever how like, you know, you're a king and she's a queen. That was so cool. Yeah, we completed completed the kingdom. And uh, when you see it in, in the movie, it's, it's pretty cool. And it shows that there are certain traditions that are okay to be modified moving forward. And I'll put it like that. Yeah.